let him know uh, from the team perspective who all's in the room. So um, I'll start with uh, Hamilton County, uh, Brad Davis, uh, Joel Thurman, and Ali Krupski are sitting back there. Uh, the pin dot, I see Jennifer Beck, uh, the city of Fishers, uh, Jason Taylor, who has uh, taken over for Jeff Hill. Uh, Jeff took a new job, but uh, Jason has come back to the city, so Jason is uh, uh, newly back with the uh, city of Fishers, so uh, welcome back. Uh, Tim Mecki uh, with the city of Fishers and the engineer's office as well. Uh, I'm looking around to make sure I haven't missed any of our uh, elected officials. I see Steve Cook's here. Uh, Steve Cook is a uh, uh, deputy mayor of the city of Noblesville. I think that is it. I haven't missed anybody else from that. But uh, so uh, one, I appreciate you being here. Uh, it's been a while since we've had one of these meetings uh, for good reason. Uh, we didn't want to have a meeting until we had new information to start sharing because we did not want these to become redundant or waste your time uh, because I'm sure you wanted us to be focused on the task at hand, uh, getting these interchanges designed. But now as we get closer, uh, we actually have some construction going on, uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, which you shouldn't be, uh, but we are doing the pipes, uh, so we are getting the underground drainage in place, so that work is happening as we speak. Uh, we're getting close to uh, letting our first uh, bridge uh, coming up this year, so now is the appropriate time, uh, obviously, to get us all back together. So um, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Randy Brooks uh, from our team at RKW as well as uh, Eric Carney with Structure Point, who is uh, uh, helping lead the design efforts. So uh, having said that, once we're done with the presentation, uh, we'll be happy to do some Q&A. If you're not comfortable asking questions in front of a large group, that's okay. All the team will stick around. You can come up, ask all the questions you want from the designers. We'll have everything over here. Happy to do that. We also have people from uh, uh, BLM, who is handling the right-of-way acquisition. And uh, so they will be here as well if you have some specific questions uh, about that process or where they're at or if you're wondering about your parcel or whether you thought your parcel should have been had something uh, uh, should have been talked to by now. So uh, at any rate, having said that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started so we can get everybody out of here and uh, I'll turn it over to Randy. All right, thanks everyone for uh, coming tonight. Uh, like Troy said, I'm Randy Brooks with RKW. I'm gonna run through a quick status update on where we stand, uh, kind of some of the things that are going on currently, uh, things you might see here in the near future. And then uh, Eric will go through kind of what will happen when we get into construction uh, at 126, the maintenance of traffic, and kind of talk about some of the other interchanges. Uh, and then we also have an update on some of the marketing efforts that are gonna start kind of being more and more uh, visible as we go forward, so. Uh, so one thing I want to point out to you, we do have the website. Uh, we usually have this at the end, but I moved it to the front this time just to make sure everybody's aware. Uh, it's drive37.com. It's hosted by City of Fishers. So you can go to this and get updates. Uh, we update periodically. Uh, so be sure to check that out if you have any questions. Uh, schedule's on there. Uh, if you're curious about some light reading, the environmental documents on there, information about right away, all sorts of stuff. So uh, feel free to check that out. The, Presentations as well are on there too. So this presentation, we'll load that up there in the next few days and you guys will be able to kind of review these slides at your leisure. Uh, so um, it's a great great place for some uh, information. Okay, so current project status. As Troy said, the drainage lines are under construction. And I'll kind of, I've got some slides to kind of show you uh, what we mean by that. Um, but that led last September and work kind of started on it kind of in the winter and now that the weather is, weather is getting nicer, <coughs> things are really starting to move. Uh, you know, the contractors out there really uh, uh, making some good progress now. So we're excited to have some construction underway and those drainage lines are really important because we needed them installed before we could move towards the interchange construction. So the fact that they're underway is, is really good for the progress of the overall project as a whole. Um, interchange construction, 126 is the first one we're going to let the southern uh, kind of terminus of this project, and that's supposed to begin late this summer. So we're going to put it out to bid for contractors in July, and then a little bit, or it usually takes about a month or so to get the contractor actually under contract, so you can probably start seeing some action, you know, maybe in August into September, 
and, uh, and I'll talk more about what that will look like uh, as well later. Um, utilities are relocating as we speak. There are certain areas along the corridor where some are already moving, some have moved already. And then as the summer, spring turns into summer, you're going to see a lot of utility relocation. Um, now that isn't necessarily, like, I want to make sure you guys don't confuse that with interchange construction because it might appear to be construction, but it's usually just the utilities. Uh, they're actually moving out of the way of the construction to come forward. Um, the marketing effort, uh, Carrie Ann from MVAC, she'll go over that in a, a little bit more detail uh, towards the end of the presentation. But we built a, uh, a website for business owners uh, for the public to kind of access information about your businesses. So if you're here from a business and want more information on that, make sure you talk to Carrie Ann and she can uh, give you some information uh, for how to be involved in that effort. Um, and then there's a lot of other projects in the area that have completed or are wrapping up. Uh, some were kind of like their own project that needed to be done regardless of 37. Others were kind of done in the knowledge that 37 was coming. So, and, uh, you know, interchange uh, or intersection improvements to handle additional traffic once we start turning traffic from 37 onto some of the side streets. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of that in the area and those are finishing up. Uh, a lot of them are finishing up this year. So as I said, uh, utility relocations are happening right now. That's a picture of one, uh, I think near 131st Street. Uh, what you're gonna start seeing is a lot of this type of stuff, a lot of overhead lines moving. Um, this is just your standard uh, thing that happens on every project. It's just with the 37 quarter, there are a ton of utilities. So there's gonna be a lot of utility relocations and a lot of that work is gonna happen this summer. So. Uh, that's really uh, kind of the next thing you're really going to start seeing is utilities moving their, their uh, lines. Uh, right away acquisition is kind of one of the big pushes right now is uh, getting you know property purchased where we need it and uh, you know just kind of like moving through that process to uh, uh, you know, obtain the land so we can build on it. Um, this link uh, will take you to the uh, uh, pamphlet that gives you all this information on the acquisition process. Since this has federal funds involved, we follow the federal guidelines for right-of-way acquisition, so everything goes through a very standardized process. Um, like Troy said, someone from BLN, who's the right-of-way um, uh, acquisition uh, uh, purchaser on this project, uh, they're here to talk to you guys. If you have a question about your particular parcel, if you think you know, someone should have talked to me, but you haven't yet, or I got talked to, and now I don't know what the next step is. Uh, you know, come come get us after the meeting, and we'll make sure we get your questions answered. Um, you know, it's a uh, process that's supposed to be fair and straightforward for everyone involved. So we'll make sure to get your questions answered if you have any. Um, so hopefully, you can see this. This is a map that kind of illustrates uh, the projects that have gone on in the area. So the green dots are all the other projects in the area. The blue uh, rectangle is kind of the 37 area of the project. Um, all these dots, except for Allisonville and 146, are basically going to be done, or already done, or will be done before the bulk of the 37 construction begins. Uh, so that's like kind of an effort that the county, the cities, they've all put forward to kind of make sure that these streets are through before, uh, you know, we start detouring traffic away from State Road 37. And just to kind of highlight those uh, real quickly, 116th in Cumberland, 116th in Allisonville, we both had intersection improvements. Uh, 126th Street in Allisonville, that's finishing up construction right now. It's kind of runs from 126 up to 131. Uh, that's what's finished kind of in the middle of summer, uh, right around July. Um, 126 Parkside, that's the Reynolds kind of area there uh, uh, by the Shell Station, Harley Davidson area. That's under construction right now. You guys probably have noticed it <coughs> just started uh, not too long ago. Uh, its time frame is the kind of wrap up by September. So there'll be a little overlap with the 126 and 37 work, but um, since the Reynolds doesn't really shut down any lanes. It should be a seamless transition. The design team has worked with the designer of that project to kind of link the two projects together. Um, 126th and Ford Drive, that is tentatively planned to have a roundabout 
uh, built next year. So it'll kind of be coinciding with the 126th Street construction, uh, kind of like the later phases of it. Um, so that's kind of like going to be right there, um, you know, Ford 126, so you'll be able to kind of loop around there if you need to access the Cadillac dealership or get into the apartments or uh, go north on Ford Drive, you'll have a roundabout there in addition to the roundabouts at 120, uh, uh, State Road 37. Um, and then uh, Cumberland, uh, that project's been complete for a little while, but 131st Street in Cumberland uh, has a roundabout that was built. Uh, and then the 131st Street Allisonville, that's a continuation of the 126 project I mentioned uh, before. It'll be finishing up in July. Um, in addition to that, when you spread out a little bit further away from the Fishers area, uh, Carmel recently upgraded 116th and Hazeldale. Uh, Noblesville uh, is planning to uh, continue the extension of 141st, uh, Paramount from 141st to 146th. Uh, part of it was built uh, with the dealership that went in there, and then uh, Noblesville will be taking it a little bit further north, and then the northern connection to 146 will be part of the 37 project. So that will seem like, you know, it's moving along slowly, but that connection piece will be uh, done, and that will give another north-south route between 141 and 146. Um, and then uh, 146 in Allisonville, uh, there's been a lot of confusion about this project. I think some people thought it was going to happen sooner than later. Uh, it's kind of tentatively scheduled right now for to be built a few years from now. The design was started, uh, but it takes a long time to get funding and get the, the right-of-way purchase, utilities needed, all that type of stuff. So just like we've been working on 37 for, you know, three and a half years now, the same type of situation, 146 in Alaska. It'll take a couple years to get there. So. 2022 and 2023 construction seasons are when that's planned to be uh, done. If you need more information about that, you know we can talk more about that after the uh, presentation. Um, okay, so upcoming lettings. Uh, as I said, 126th Street, the current plan is to let it in July, which basically means that's when it goes out to bid for contractors. Um, if everything goes well with the bid, we get good prices, and then construction will start, you know, basically in August. Uh, we'll run through until winter, and then there'll be some winterizing phases, and then it'll continue through the following season, following year. So that one will be built kind of in a year and a half time frame. Uh, shortly after that, we're going to get 146th Street going. So we're targeting November, but ideally we want to get a let in the winter time. So we're pushing hard to hit a November date so that the contractor can be ready to go as soon as the weather gets nice. Um, and I'll, Eric will talk more about that one, but basically that one will be a two-year project. We're gonna keep traffic open on 146th Street and on State Road 37. So in order to do that, it takes extra phases. There's more moving and shifting traffic around, so it just takes a little bit longer to build. So that'll be a full two-year project. And then the other three interchanges in the middle, 131, 141, and then 135th, uh, we're still trying to figure out how to package those together, but the tentative plan right now is to kind of let them as one package in the summer of 2020, and then kind of stagger the uh, construction timeframes of, of uh, when they're built. So this is uh, the current schedule. So you kind of see at the top the southern drainage line and the northern drainage line. The blue line is basically when they were bid by the contractor, and the green uh, time uh, you know section is when they're under construction. So the southern drainage line, the plan is it will be done this summer, and the northern drain line, which is a little bit longer, uh, is a little bit uh, a different type of uh, tunneling operation. It's going to take a little bit longer. It's planned to be done by the end of the calendar year. So this winter. So getting those done allows us to build these other interchanges. So 126th Street will come online about the time that the Southern Drainage Line is installed, uh, and 146th Street will, you know, begin construction about the same time as the Northern Drainage Line is completed. And then, as I said, the 131 and 41, we're we're planning to let them together, but we won't build them at the same time because we don't want to have too many intersections. Uh, under construction right beside each other. So we'll probably uh, kind of get 131 going as 126 finishes up. 146 is a longer lead time, longer construction uh, time frame. 
So we'll kind of have 141 sort of start as 146 finishes up. And some of those schedules are kind of to be determined because once we get construction actually underway, we might find that the contractor can move faster than current schedule. We might be able to accelerate some of these other things, or we may find that uh, you know we, we uh, you know have to you know, re reassess. You know, maybe we can't build two at the same time. Or maybe we need to rearrange it. You know, all that type of stuff. And those middle intersections is kind of uh, something that we're still uh, working through. Um, so the drainage line construction, a little more detail about that. Uh, 11 September, construction's underway. Uh, the south trunk line, the only construction you probably have noticed is if you drive north and south on Lantern between 126 and 131, there's some uh, signage there, you know, trucks entering and leaving the road. And then about halfway through by the bridge, uh, there's a construction entrance. And right now, if you drive through there, it's really cool. They uh, kind of have the drainage swale uh, fairly well developed. It's uh, not fully completed, but it's kind of a lot of the earthwork is done. Uh, it looks pretty, uh, it's a lot of extensive earth moving they've done in there. So if you get a chance to drive by there and uh, take a look, it's, uh, uh, it's kind of amazing how much work they've uh, accomplished in, uh, during the winter and just a few, few weeks of good weather we've had this year. Um, the north trunk line is actually underway too. The work that you may have noticed on that is up near the Allisonville 146th Street area. That's actually the outlet to the White River. So they're going to build from downriver and then work their way upstream back towards 37. So you've probably seen some work uh, uh, up there where they're kind of installing the first pit, uh, doing some clearing back there for access, uh, construction entrances and things like that. Then they've also installed some MOT along 146th Street through that stretch, and that's basically to aid in getting vehicles on and off the pavement and to make sure it's safe for motors to go through there uh, during construction. So this is kind of the, the map of the drainage line. It basically runs right along 146th Street from State Road 37 out to the White River. And like I said, the work you've probably seen has been up near Allisonville and uh, 146th area. Uh, you may start to see work uh, along the road as they build the pits, you know, as they go. Uh, and then the final pit will be right there, uh, you know, kind of near 37 where the, the drain line will basically end. Southern drain line uh, is a little shorter. Uh, it basically, uh, essentially halfway between 126th and 131st. It kind of sneaks through, misses some of those, between those buildings uh, back in there on Ford Drive. And then when it gets behind the YMCA area and where the, uh, the fuel ice uh, brink area is, uh, that dotted area is the uh, drainage swell I was talking about. And that part has been built and the first pit has been installed and they're tunneling back towards Sarah 37 uh, as we speak basically. So this is kind of some photos of construction. Um, what you're seeing in the left photo is the pit before any digging operations had begun. So this was the clean pit. Uh, they just got a hole in the, the sheeting in the wall there. They haven't brought the machine in or anything yet. So that's sort of the work area the contractor uh, uses to do the tunneling. What you're seeing in the right picture, that's actually the machine that does the cutting. So that was the day they brought the machine in and we're kind of lowering it down into the pit. Um, this photo basically shows on the right, that's the pit installed. And you can see they got some safety shoring to uh, uh, install, you know, for the pit. Uh, you can kind of see at the top of that photo, the buildings in the background are those apartments behind, or uh, condos behind the, uh, YMCA behind the fuel tank. Um, the picture on the left is uh, kind of the start of tunneling operations. There's a conveyor belt in there, and so when the tunnel digs, it actually pulls the earth back, and it fills that bucket up, and then they lift the bucket up when it gets full, and so they do that over and over again as they, as they tunnel it. Um, and this is a video, this is a short video. So this kind of gives you an idea of as they're tunneling, how much dirt is being like shot back into the, uh, so that's how much dirt they're, they're moving and tunneling through as they go. 
And they're doing that, you know, 12 hours a day, just tunneling and, and, and moving earth. So um, that's basically what's happening now. And this is a photo, this is what it looks like on the inside of that tunneling operation. So I wouldn't want to be that guy, but <laughs> so that's that's the cutter there, and it, as it cuts, it brings the, the soil back, and the conveyor belt just brings it back to the guys on the outside, and they haul it away. Um, so this picture doesn't really do justice to it at all, but the picture on the left is that drainage swell I talked about. Uh, if you're driving on lanterns, kind of there in the background. Um, so if you're driving north of Lantern, if you look through, uh, the trees have been kind of thinned out pretty well there, and you can really see and get a better feel for it. It's a pretty large operation they undertook there to get those drainage swells and balls. They're not really uh, what you would normally think of like a detention pond or anything. Uh, it might look that way to some folks, but it's really just a way to slow the water down, detain it, uh, you know, and, and let it kind of release slowly into the uh, the, the creek bed. The picture on the right uh, is the first, basically, the first pit of the northern drainage line. So uh, you can see the uh, bridge on 146 across the White River is kind of there in the background in the top uh, left corner there. Uh, these white circles, those are sinking piles that they drill into the ground and then they'll come back now and they'll, they'll pull the dirt out of there and that'll give them their uh, work area. So on the northern line they use these round work areas, whereas on the southern line they use more of a rectangular shape. And the reason is it's just a different type of operation. Uh, the northern line's a little bit, it's longer, it's a different type of pipe, you know, it's a bigger pipe, it's just everything about it is uh, a little bit heavier duty on the northern side than on the south side. Not to say the south side is easy work or anything like that, it's just it's a little different operation on the north. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Eric, and he'll kind of run through where we stand with design and how construction might work. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to run through some of the design stuff for you. I think in the interest of time, most of my focus is going to be on 126th Street. And just to kind of give you guys a taste of what that maintenance of traffic and what the sequencing could look like. I know if I'm a driver, that's probably my bigger concern right now. As far as the design status goes, obviously our truck lines were done with design. 126th Street, we just finished the design for that. So now the process we're at with 126 is getting all the contract documents put together and ready so we can advertise it to have our contractors bid on it. For the rest of the corridor, so 131st on north, those designs are 80 to 90, some are probably maybe down into the 70 range. But most of the design items we have left are more of the fine details in the plans. We're trying to refine some of the maintenance of traffic schemes for each of those individual intersections. And then we know there's some access concerns and questions raised, so we're going back just to evaluate if there's things we can do to make some small revisions. We're also working with utility companies, uh, making sure that our plans coincide with what they need to do to get the lines out of the way and the timelines to get there. So I'll start on the south and go north at 126th Street. Uh, most of the renderings up here, like Randy mentioned, will be online later, and we have them on the boards. They should all be the same, I think, except one, and I'll point that out. So 126th Street. Mentioned that the contractor, you likely won't see him out there until late summer, early fall. It'll be one and a half years that he'll be out there. The intent that we have is you will see construction work at the end of this year but we don't want to make any restrictions on 126th Street. We want to make sure any restrictions we make for closures happen within one calendar year. So when you see them out there, we're going to start some of our early work. A lot of this is dictated by the cross hatching that you'll see on these aerials. So there's some temporary pavement that we have to put on the outside of the northbound lanes. And then we also have temporary pavement that we'll put in the median. So the lanes will shift back and forth but we'll still have two lanes in each direction and we'll still keep 126th Street open. 
Some of the other work that you might see is there may be some other areas outside of the pavement that the contractor may choose to work on. But again, for the rest of this calendar year, our intent is to keep all of the traffic lanes open and keep the intersection open so everyone can still get around. <coughs> Over the winter, construction will slow down a little bit, um, but we anticipate by, I would guess, potentially April is when they'll really start to ramp it back up. We're gonna let them get started in March, and if they wanna close 126th Street as early as March, I think, 1st, um, there's potential to do that. But since we don't have a contractor on board, I don't quite know what his dates are. So the first main phase with the closure will happen next year. What we intend to do is move all of the traffic to the existing northbound lanes. So we'll still keep our two <coughs> lanes in both directions. The main thing is that all the construction will happen on the west side of 37. So that'll mean that we will have to then close 126th Street. Now, if you're heading southbound on 37, there'll be no signal or anything for you. You'll just head straight through 37. If you're heading northbound on 37, we will keep some kind of a signal there to allow people to turn right and head east on 126th Street, or people on 126th Street can come up to 37 and still turn and head north. My best guess is that this phase will likely last through about the middle of July, so it'd be about half of the construction season. Once it's time to make the switch, we'll do a similar type of operation, but on the other side of the road. So now the contractor will switch and he'll start to build the eastern half of the interchange. And we'll do the same kind of two-way configuration with traffic, but on the newly constructed pavement. So at this time, the roles kind of get reversed. Now if you're heading northbound on 37, you won't be able to turn off of 37. You'll have to just drive straight through. If you're headed southbound on 37, now you'll have the opportunity to either turn off on 126 or from 126 turn on and head south on 37. Part of the reason in this phase why we can't allow any turns is we are going to utilize the proposed pavement of 37 underneath and the future ramp pavement up top. So if you're headed northbound on 37, you will actually go down on 37 that goes depressed under the bridge and you will come back up. If you're headed southbound on 37, you will actually have two lanes that go up the ramp. You'll go through where the roundabout will be and then back down the ramp again. Now in this phase, we won't have the roundabout in place. There will just be pavement there so you'll be able to drive straight through. So don't. You won't have to navigate around that roundabout during that time. So that'll allow free flow traffic through that area. That should last hopefully into early fall. At that time, there'll be a little bit of cleanup work for the contractor. So I mentioned that we won't install the rest of the roundabout so you can drive straight through. So this last fifth, fifth phase is where we'll put the rest of the roundabout in. The bridge will still be closed. But at this point in time, you'll still be able to go north and south on 37 like you have been the whole time. You'll also be able to get off of 37 and then turn off on 26 or get back on. We just won't be able to have the bridge open at that time as they finish up construction. So during that time when 126th Street is closed, there will be an official signed detour route Right now that detour route will utilize Cumberland Road, 131st Street, and Allisonville Road. Now this is the official signed one and it's primarily due to the truck traffic that's out there. Most trucks that we know will have to get to these areas won't be able to navigate easily through Lantern Road, so we're gonna sign them to Allisonville to get around because we know they'll be able to handle that. Obviously there'll be other public roads open that you can use, but this will be the route that's signed. Now, not only will we have signs for the detour route along 126th Street to alert drivers, but as you travel north and south on 37, we will also have signs there showing you if you're wanting to get to 126th Street where that detour route is so that any newcomer to the area or is not aware of the project, they won't be stuck on 37 and not know where to go. So moving north through the rest of our intersections, I'm not gonna touch too much on design, so if you do have specific design questions, our team is here afterwards and we're happy to answer any questions or walk you through anything that you have. 
Um, 131st is about 90% done with design right now, so it's also in some of the final stages. 135th, so the rendering, I believe, on our boards is more up to date. We're, we're not intending to make all concrete in those big median areas, so you can ignore that. I think that was one of our older ones we accidentally grabbed. I'm 141st, it's still back at our single lane roundabout that we had talked about last time. Um, that one's maybe in the 70-ish percent design range at the moment. And then 146th Street is our single point urban interchange, or if any of us slip in talking, we might accidentally call it a spooey, and this is what we're referring to. Randy touched a little bit on the maintenance of traffic. So our other three main interchanges, the maintenance of traffic will be similar to what I just showed you for 126th Street. For 146th Street, we're doing something a little different in that we're intending to keep not only two lanes of traffic on 37 for the traffic, for the public, we will also be keeping traffic on 146th Street open as well. So the duration of the project will be longer than the others, but it's because of the extra phases that's needed in order to keep traffic open. Now, there might be a week or two closure that we may need in order to transfer between some of our phases, but for the majority of the project, we will be keeping traffic open on 146th Street. From here, I'm going to turn it over to Carrie Ann to talk about the marketing plan. and um, I represent uh, the account team that's working uh, with the city um, for the marketing program for this project. And for those of you um, who maybe weren't at last spring's meeting, um, MFX, uh, the company that I represent, we uh, participated in the bidding process to uh, be the marketing firm of record for this project. And so what that entails is, uh, you know, our primary role is to advocate and support the business community so that all businesses within the corridor um, remain as healthy and um, you know intact as possible uh, due to the construction uh, and conveniences and so what uh, when we were awarded the contract you know that that contract is specifically to build resources for businesses and then also to place marketing plans uh, that last throughout the duration of, of construction that are promoting businesses um, and also sharing information, resources, routes, keeping you all informed so that you can support your local business owners uh, throughout the construction. So the $500,000 is set aside uh, for this effort um, over the past, well, since last May, uh, when we had the last public meeting, our role has been to really engage the business community and form what we are calling our business stakeholder group. And so since uh, about July, we've been meeting monthly with business stakeholders. We have about 40 uh, business owners participating in that group. So any of you here that are business owners um, and haven't uh, been a part of that group so far, please come find me afterwards so that you can join that group. Uh, we are actually already have some resources here tonight that I can uh, send with you as you leave. Um, but that, di that dialogue that we are having so far and moving forward is really important because that's allowing us to support you as a business. Um, it's also allowing us to make sure that we're communicating with the community at large uh, so that we're connecting business with community uh, throughout this whole project. Um, as part of our efforts, uh, you know, earlier we talked about the project website and, uh, you know, all the timelines and the traffic studies, you know, resources that are on that site. We have created a marketing uh, campaign site. They will, it does completely interlink with uh, the existing project site, so there isn't any confusion. But the purpose of, of the marketing website is to support the overall campaign that we're running throughout this project. So you will begin hearing uh, something called 37 Thrives, which is our uh, marketing campaign that we have uh, 
in the last month has been in a soft launch uh, mode where we did turn the website on. Uh, we will be announcing a formal kickoff um, in early June, but this website, you can go to 37thrives.com today. Um, you are able to find fact sheets, uh, some just quick tips on you know, the impact and improvements of the project, the things that you need to know now. Um, you can also sign up for emails, you can sign up for text alerts, uh, and then we also have the social channels that we will be using to communicate with you um, and on behalf of the businesses throughout this project. So please check this out. Uh, there's also a video on, on uh, the homepage that kind of introduces what 37 Thrives is. So you will start hearing that more often in the next coming months. Um, the tagline we're using is 37 Thrives, support the drive, business thrives. Um, you know, really we want our marketing efforts to communicate that you know 37 this corridor is a destination and so uh, improving it is obviously going to impact uh, the greater good of the community um, what i wanted to kind of leave you with today because really at this stage uh, you know the dollars that we have for the marketing program are very intentionally designed to be spent towards advertising and promotion so that uh, you all know what's happening at each stage, and our businesses are always front and center, top of mind, um, keeping you engaged with them uh, during the construction. And so we will be getting, uh, we will begin our paid advertising uh, elements in June. So we're just a couple months away. So between now and then, uh, we are really trying to gather as much. Uh, information from you all so email addresses we're encouraging you to sign up for text alerts so that when we do start start our formal uh, marketing kickoff that you know we're reaching as many of you as possible um, so this is kind of just a little sneak peek of, of really the heart of 37 thrives and what you will see when the marketing campaign launches is a lot of faces of the business owners we want to make sure that we're connecting um, those stories of, of our business owners, that lifeblood of our local economy. And so we will be telling stories about bus the business owners um, using their photos, their business locations in our ads. Um, we will have lots of content on social that you can engage with. Um, and then each season, our business owner groups will be extending discounts and incentive offers uh, to you know kind of encourage you to uh, support them uh, as construction is happening. So just to leave you with a few uh, things that you can check out after today, um, definitely go to 37thrives.com so that you can um, see that first wave of information we've provided. It will be changing <clears throat> on an ongoing basis, so you'll see all kinds of updates happening there. Um, we also have listed our social media um, pages that are currently being built. Um, they're live, so you can go and follow those. The content uh, will begin being added to those uh, here in the next month and a half. And then, of course, you can text 37 Thrives to 41411 and be a part of our mobile text alert program. And so what that means is if there is an update related to a route or a construction um, update that we want to get out quickly, then you can get that update directly to your mobile phone. Uh, we will also communicate that always through email and the social pages. Uh, Drive Nature's Twitter account will maintain um, the, the full role of those traffic updates with our Instagram and Facebook pages really being dedicated to 37 Thrives and, and the business um, programs and promotions that are a part of this. That's all I've got. And then if you, so if you are a business, um, definitely come find me, a business owner. Um, I have, and then for everybody else, we do have some handouts that just have some quick facts on the back and then also these uh, social media handles so that everybody knows where to go for information. I'll turn it back to the All right, so that wraps up the uh, actual slide presentation on the project. Uh, before we get into questions, uh, a few quick introductions, and also uh, maybe to make everybody's lives a little bit easier if you have specific questions. So I see Jeremy sitting back there from United, and uh, 
I'm sure that they may have some others, but uh, they are doing the design on 141st Street and 146th Street. So if you have specific questions about those interchanges or that design, uh, questions related to that, uh, they will be back over here um, behind those plan sets or the, the, that area. So if you want to ask specific questions about those, uh, you can talk directly to the designer. I know Eric, uh, the structure point, um, they're doing the design on um, 126th and 131st. And I think United also is doing the work on 135th, right? And so they'll be back there so they can be able to answer very specific questions we have about a specific area. I also know Mike and the guys from BLN are here. There we go. Uh, they will be back there as well. So if you have specific questions about right away acquisition, and we're going to talk directly to the guys handling that. Uh, they will be back there as well. Uh, so having said that, um, we have a few minutes here to take some questions, and uh, I'm happy to open it up. Could we have a roundabout at 141st and Monday so that we are not restricted on both ends? I understand your question. Uh, the problem where Monday is, Monday is, compared to the interchange. So you're only talking about you know, less than 500 feet from Monday Drive to the interchange. So uh, based on the standards that we have to adhere to, uh, there's nothing there. We're gonna have to keep that median there. Now that doesn't mean that we can't continue to look at the corridor uh, in terms of access, which is what uh, the city of Fishers, uh, Noblesville, the county, uh, that's what we, do as we have to as we're getting farther along in design. Mm -hmm. So as we get farther in design and we start to see these issues that are popping up, uh, things that um, quite frankly we realize are probably going to change that environment there a little bit. Uh, what can we do to make improvements on the corridor? And so those things are still ongoing discussions. And so we don't have a great answer for you tonight, but hopefully as we get closer because I'm pretty closer, it's probably one of the last ones uh, that will get left so we have a lot of time between now and then uh, to keep kind of working on those issues so we'll keep you informed as we keep going through that but uh and i know there are some other people that are here because I've, I've heard from all of you this week um that there are issues there at 141st street uh, we recognize it we're working through some solutions uh it's nothing we can talk about tonight um, other than to say that we are aware of it. Um, we're trying to see what we can do in terms of, uh, from a local perspective, to help improve the corridor and help minimize that as much as we can. Okay, because I, I forgot what you just, the phrase was, it would change, it would impact the, what did you say? Well, it's going to impact the access. So access. today you had that full access there, but um, what I would say is that because of the backups at the light, you know, so you have that access, but once we replace that with the bridge, and keep in mind that these bridges, they revert back to the state of Indiana when the project's over. So the local control ends when the project's over and we hand them back. And so we have to design to the criteria and the specifications that one end up says we have to design to, and two, um, obviously we have to design to the safety of the public and the transfer and you know the drivers out there on the roads and uh, try to balance all those things and also balance the business community which was one of the reasons why the local community wanted to have this local control was so that we can help balance these issues the best we can to you know have as minimal impact as possible to your business and other people's businesses. So I think as we continue to look at the corridor, as the local officials look at the corridor, hopefully we'll have some things that we can talk about in future meetings about perhaps <laughs> things that they can do at a local level to help with that problem, that, that issue of that restricted access of Monday when you can write in right now. Yes, sir. So it's on Monday. It looks like we're going to lose some information. Exit and entry on 141st. Money's being shut down at, at the end of 146, correct? That's the way it shows now. Monday, one for the Right, so it'll be the same issue at 146 with the right in, right out access. 
that's the whole problem. You know. Right. Now we, we understand the problem on both ends, 146 and 141, but it's going to be the same. You know, the medians are close to those interchanges, so we can't allow full access at the same time you have cars coming into those interchanges. So it, it's just a matter of looking at the corridor itself and how can we best move that traffic back through so they can easily access back into uh, to get to those businesses. One of the renderings shows that 146, one of the renderings, mm -hmm. not the line you're on, shows that money ends. That's not the case? No, I mean, unless somebody, it is the case. Money ends. I thought money was running right around. So 146, it does end. All right, so it does end. I stand corrected, sir. So we're going to lose, so we're going to lose access at 141st, and we're going to lose it, period, at 146. Based on the current design today, yes, that is correct. And so, and what I would tell you is the same thing. <laughs> we continue, we continue to look at it, and uh, we're going to continue to look at what we can do on those corridors to help with that issue specifically. So how, do, how do we stay in front of this to make sure that, that we continue to look at it and it doesn't slide by and just get done before we have a chance to have to say? Well, I think what you're doing now has put it in our radar. Obviously, it was there before. Uh, we recognize the issue. Um, it is obviously, uh, you know, we're getting a lot of, a lot of emails, calls, uh, et cetera. We're having some meetings set up with some of the, uh, the owners there uh, as well. So I don't think this issue is going away. It's, we want to address it. We want to do the best we can to come up with a solution that though it may not make everybody 100% happy, uh, helps, you know, but doesn't totally destroy everything. And so that's what we're trying to get to, uh, some solution there. So I can assure you, it's, it's we're not gonna let it go. We're not gonna forget about it. Uh, we're definitely looking at it, and we're definitely going to make sure that uh, we get some answers back to everybody. Um, where, which entrance are you talking about specifically? Off 141st. Right. There's Countryville subdivision uh -huh. and Brayton's, and then there's a third one that goes up to Are you talking about specifically during construction or after construction? During construction. During construction? Yeah. So during construction, uh, what we're doing is we're taking that very feedback you're talking about. So as we talk to the HOAs and other folks, we're saying specifically, uh, what do these issues look like? What are you experiencing? I mean, are people going to be deterring through your neighborhoods? Are you, know, are you going to have problems getting out when there's a lot of traffic coming through there because we're doing um, another project up the road, right? So we're doing 146, so they're going to come on 141st. Uh, what are we doing to help mitigate that? And so uh, right now we have, we work with um, ANF Engineering, who has done all the traffic modeling for us, and we're looking at these issues specifically. Uh, but we're also keeping ourselves um, prepared that if we do run into those issues, we can do probably all the things you're talking about. We have to, you know, put a temporary signal out there, then we have the ability to do that uh, as conditions warrant it. Um, if we need to do different things within the neighborhoods because of a lot of detour traffic, uh, we've talked to a lot of different HOAs. Same thing, we're, we're, what we're trying to do is find the best answers to keep ourselves flexible so that if we do actually have to put in a temporary signal, the city can certainly do that. So that's that's a possibility. If it's you are talking about. Yeah. Okay, so we're working very closely with HSE schools and the buses. So we've talked to the operation folks over there. We're in constant communication with them in terms of our project and when we plan to do it, and even the, the phasing of projects. 
I have to talk to them about that to ensure that they can get the buses where they need to be so they can get the kids there. I know that they have some plans in place where they will stage buses earlier on the other side of 37 to make sure they get the kids picked up on time and get them there safely. But we're, we're working very closely with them and we have a lot of communication. And so we're, uh, we understand that's an issue. I mean, there's six, 700 buses. I don't want to speak on their behalf in terms of timing, but my understanding was they have the ability to speak directly to parents so that if there are some issues like that, uh, they have a mechanism in place that they will let you know as soon as they understand, but, and they have an open line of communication with us in terms of the project. Okay. Yes, and then you can. Speaking of which, when traffic all starts diverting off of like 926, you know, a lot of kids cross there to go to Fisher's High School, are you guys going to adjust the lights so that we can actually get some traffic through on our 21st? And, I mean, right now they're three lights deep um, off in the afternoon trying to get kids up, and all of this is just going to accentuate it. It stops 37 longer, but um, have you guys talked about that at all? We act, yeah, we, we talk about this stuff uh, continuously. Uh, uh, working with NDOT, they're very closely tied with us on this project uh, in a partnership form. And so, in terms of signal timings and what we can do to make sure it's traffic, especially in those in the morning hours where you have that peak flow, uh, to be able to do some things and uh, uh, and keep in mind that we're still going to have the peak flow on 37 because that will maintain uh, during the entire project uh, that two lanes. And so, uh, we're definitely uh, talking to everybody about that. And that is definitely an issue that we are aware of, and we're going to address it as, as we need to. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Um, we, we see that um, when 37 construction is going on, a lot of traffic is going to kind of divert into Addisonville Road. And between 131 and, and 146 is known, I don't see a plan to rise in this. So, wouldn't be a bottleneck there when people are coming in? And, you know, I said the Alice and your role is going to stop there. And the traffic coming on and it'll be stuck there on bottlenecks. On 37 itself? No, on the Alice and your role between the 131st and 146. Oh, uh, going east west. Yeah, there will definitely be a, I don't know that I would call it a bottleneck, but there will be an increase in traffic. Um, we understand that because they're going to have to get across there. As we do 126, you know there's going to be more traffic on 131. There'll be more traffic on 141. So we're taking that into consideration, uh, even as we you know look at detours um, to understand working with NDOT on signal timings and to make sure that we try to get traffic flowing as best we can, uh, understanding that um, it's going to be construction. And so anytime you have construction, there are going to be uh, hiccups along the way. I mean, there's just going to be an increase in traffic. So uh, we're going to do the absolute best we can. We're going to be monitoring it in real time, and we're able to make adjustments in real time. But I'm not going to stand here and tell you that you may not be stuck in traffic for a little bit in the morning, uh, because the reality is it's probably going to happen. And until we can make adjustments, uh, we'll make it better as, the, as it goes on. And, and of course, the as you drive, as the traveling public drives, and they get used to how the traffic patterns are going, usually the traffic, the, you guys all start to figure it out too. And uh, where you want to go and what time you want to leave and, and uh, what routes you want to take. And so, uh, but needless to say, we will be uh, addressing those issues. Um, just to answer your question, ma'am, I think you were talking about the Allisonville Road between 131st uh, all the way up to 146. Uh, part of this project is that we have, during all MOT uh, phases, we have a traffic mitigation plan. So we look at the adjacent uh, intersections all around State Road 37. So if 126 is under construction, we look at all of the adjacent intersections around the city, and if there's any um, any possibilities that we that those intersections need upgrades, we would do that. So for example, if, if it needs a left turn lane, if there's uh, some signals that needs to be adjusted, that is part of the traffic mitigation plan. So. Part of that, if uh, 146 goes into construction, there is uh, plans and steps in place that we would look at all of these adjacent intersections, basically 146 in Allisonville, 141st in uh, uh, 
Allison Hall as well, 141st in Cumberland, 146 in Cumberland, and all that. If there is, if there needs to be an, an extra left turn lane, we'll uh, re redo some pavement marking to add that extra queue length for the left turn lane for more extra, another left turn lane for that. If there needs to be some uh, signal adjustments, like uh, like she just, just mentioned in the morning, so we can let all the buses go through and not have any delays. That's also taken into consideration. We're in constant conversation with the school boards and uh, the superintendents just so they know what the best route is for their school buses and also what the best times are to avoid a lot of that rush hour traffic. So hopefully that kind of answered your question and uh, hopefully makes sense with, with all the other MOTs that go in place. So if 126 goes in, we know that there are certain upgrades that needs to happen on, on all the different um, intersections around the city. See, you did such a better job explaining that than I did. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, I've heard that there will be a move of the John Pass station at 126 to that big empty lot where they're doing a roundabout right now. What was the question again? I'm sorry. Shell gas station at right. 126 on 37, mm -hmm. but have to move across the street to that big empty field that runs up to Cumberland Road, and they're doing a roundabout right now on 126 with that intersection that takes you back where those businesses are, like the uh, Goodwill and so forth. Yeah, so I, there's definitely a roundabout project going there yeah. at Reynolds Drive. I don't know about what Shell the, moving on this one of these guys. Is that the, the question that you're talking about? The one, Shell station there on the east side? Yes, I thought we were going to move across the street on 126, like down from that um, dollar tree in that big field. Uh, Where's the Shell station? Yeah, I don't know. No, that Shell station, as far as I know, that Shell station stays because uh, with that intersection on Reynolds, uh, that intersection is going to get built up with a, with a meeting as well. And that could be accessed through the roundabout that's going into Parkside, right, next, right a little bit east of Reynolds Drive. So the access, if you're coming off of 37, traveling east, and trying to get to that, uh, to that Shell gas station, as far as my knowledge goes, that Shell station is staying. And the way you access it is through that roundabout that goes into 126 in the park side. Thank you, but is there going to be construction in that big field that you're going to start? That construction, that construction is going on there in that big field is another um, service road that goes and ties into Reynolds. So um, there is going to be Reynolds and then that service road that takes you into the roundabout on the backside, and that way you can get out uh, to 37 West. Okay. Yep. Just out of curiosity, how does the uh, trail construction impact the 37 project? Like, you try to do sort of legs on it at a time when you have some of those through streets, such as like 126, already shut down? I'm sorry, you said the trails? The construction of the trail, I was just wondering how the 37 project impacts the construction. Like, I know that that trail is getting constructed in segments. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering how the 37 project may impact the decision of which segment to build out at which time. Is it the nickel plate trail? Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, the nickel plate trail. Because it crosses all these streets we're going to try to now. Yes, so uh, basically, let's, uh, let's assume that 126 goes in right now, so there will be connections across the bridge to take you to the other side from east to west. So that connection goes, uh, and hopefully when, when the trail construction starts, there definitely will be some connections that take you from 126 onto the trail itself. So there, there will be trail on both sides of 126 on the bridge as well that takes you from east to west. I think the concern is more dual construction. Are you going to be constructing at the intersections of the trail the same time we're trying to detour and navigate? No, 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 no. The construction, will, they will have uh, time timelines that mesh with each other. So we're not going to close close down an intersection on 126 to build the trail while we're, we're working on stairway 37. There, are, there's going to be some synchronization between uh, all the projects that go around, especially the trail one. So yeah. okay. I got time for a couple more. Just a long line of uh, pedestrian cycling, the cyclist east west. Not during the construction, but after the construction, across 146th Street or across 126th Street, do the rendering show how it, will the bike paths that currently exist on 146th be maintained? That that information is all exists in the rendering. 
Yes, there should there should be um, taken into consideration all pedestrian crossings <coughs> on all of these inter interchanges. Uh, obviously, during MOT, there's going to be some um, some some downtime, but after after everything is is said and done, there are dedicated crossings on all of these interchanges on both sides. So you'll be able to kind of connect from from east to west. Yeah. We've probably got time for one more. If somebody has a question, and I'll remind you that if you have specific questions. The designers, um, the right away acquisition folks were all here, so happy to direct you back that way. So I don't see any hands. So uh, once again, thank you guys for coming out tonight. We appreciate your involvement. It's going to be a, a few years here. We got a lot going on, but we continue to have these meetings. So thank you very much.